Hey, New Hope, Pastor Tommy here. And I thought today on April 2nd, uh, instead of a devotional, I would actually give you a list of books that um, if you finished Tiger King already on Netflix, you might want to check out. And all the books here, they're in no particular order, but they're books that in some way have had a, a big effect on my life. And so I'll go through them. I'll give you a sort of little annotated bibliography on each of them. And so at some point, if you want to, you can hit pause on the video. And if you want to write down the list, and I made sure all these books are also available on Kindle so you can maintain social distancing and not have to go out. So for reading lists, let's just jump right in. The first book on my list is Spiritual Depression, Its Causes and Its Cure by Martin Lloyd-Jones. Now, why is that book important? You know, it was 20, 25 years ago. I had just gone into ministry and I felt depressed and I thought, wondered, is there any book that would help me. And I saw this book and I thought, well, spiritual depression, maybe that's right up my alley. And I read it and Lloyd Jones, he basically, it's sermons and he tells his congregation in these sermons that you are some of the most miserable people that I've ever met in my life. And he said, I think the reason that you're miserable is you don't really understand the gospel. And so the rest of the book is about the gospel. It's about what justification means, what sanctification means, what it means to have faith. For me, it was really eye-opening, and so I commend it to you. The next book on my list, Not the Way It's Supposed to Be by uh, Planninga. If you've ever heard me talk about shalom, that things aren't the way they're supposed to be, and that what the gospel does is it's making them more and more the way they're supposed to be, I, I think I got that all from Planninga. It's a very readable book. It's a great book. It's a fun book, um, so check out, check it out. The next book on the list, Dynamics of Spiritual Life by Richard Loveless. Um, if you've ever heard Tim Keller speak, preach, talk, train people, he's teaching the dynamics of spiritual life, that these are the dynamics that happen when the gospel is sort of moving in a community or when revival is happening or reformation is happening. Um, it's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit like sort of a, a history of revivals, but also it's doctrinal, um, but it's very applicable. Trust me. It's a good book. And next on the list, of course, is Tim Keller, Reason for God. I mean, almost anything by Keller is pretty good. Um, Reason for God, maybe if you're a, an unbeliever, this will move you into at least being a doubter. You know, Or if you are a believer, it'll help you feel a lot better about your faith. Maybe for those of you who are stuck um, in quarantine with your spouse, maybe meaning of marriage might be what you need. Either way, you sort of can't go wrong here. Next on the list is According to Plan by Goldsworthy. Goldsworthy is one of my favorite authors. In fact, you could read anything by Goldsworthy, I think, and it's great because really what he does is he's big on how do we see Jesus in the whole Bible? And that's what this book, According to Plan, is specifically about. You know, going from Genesis to Revelation, how the whole Bible is about Jesus. You hear me say that all the time, um, but if you want to read it yourself, that's the place to start. Next on the list is A Light to the Nations by Goheen. Goheen is very similar to Goldsworthy. You know, I was showing someone a while back. Um, I have the book in paperback. It's on Kindle. And I underline things that I think are important in books with a, with a ruler and a pen. And if you take my copy of A Light to the Nations, my paperback copy, almost every word in the whole book is underlined. It just talks about how God has had a mission from the very beginning of creation um, to redeem the world, to redeem his people. And it's just an awesome book. So I would commend A Light to the Nations to you as well. As we go along, Bold Love, uh, anything by Dan Allender is great. Bold Love is a great starting place. Um, it's basically about how to love people, especially how to love someone who's wicked, how to love someone who's a fool, and how to love someone who's just an average sinner. So as you can imagine, it's been a very helpful book during my tenure as a pastor. That said, moving right along, um, if you want to read something historical, but also fictional and classical, Pilgrim's Progress, you can't go wrong. Charles Spurgeon read Pilgrim's Progress over a hundred times. and He's probably the greatest preacher who ever lived. I've only read it about four times. And so, you know, I'm 4% of what Spurgeon was maybe, but it's just a great book. It's an allegory of the Christian life. And I have parts of it that when I read it, I just can't help but, but cry. It's an awesome book. And then finally, I've got, I have a fiction book in here. One of my favorite books of all time 
is The Book of Bev by Frederick Buechner. It's actually three novels in one. And basically, Leo Bebb is this charlatan preacher. And it's a story of his life and all these wacky characters around him. And it, it, I say he's a charlatan, but you'd never really know. And it's just the kind of book, we'll put it this way. <laughs> Probably last summer, I started rereading it. And Judy and I were laying in bed. And she heard me cry. I was crying while, while I was reading the introduction to this book. And she said, why are, why are you crying? Isn't that like a fun book? And I said, I just feel like I'm, I'm being uh, reintroduced to a bunch of my old friends we haven't met for a while. And so the book of Bev is just like, is awesome. It's hard to explain. It's just this sort of wacky charlatan. It's also set in West Palm Beach, at least the first part of it is. So grow, having grown up in Palm Beach Gardens, it was a big thing for me. So check out those books. And once you finish that list, get back to me and I will uh, give you another one. So this coming weekend is Palm Sunday. I'm not going to preach about Palm Sunday, but I will be preaching um, about an eye for an eye. And I don't, I don't mean like the Chuck Norris, Richard Roundtree movie from 1981, which was very good, by the way. Um, I'm talking about Jesus teaching where he says, you've heard it said an eye for an eye, but I say. And so I look forward to seeing you. I'm pretty excited. This week we'll be streaming not only on YouTube, but also on Facebook. So if you want to get alerted for that, just like our page from New Hope, and we will see you then. Have a good day.